Welcome to Tales of Terror, the spine-chilling channel that will keep you up at night. If you're a fan of horror, suspense, and macabre, then you've come to the right place. Our channel features a variety of terrifying tales that will send shivers down your spine and make your heart race. So, if you're ready to explore the darker side of storytelling, hit that subscribe button and join our community of horror enthusiasts. We promise to keep the scares coming and the nightmares alive. Welcome to Tales of Terror. Let's get started. My name is Eileen and this is my story. In the dimly lit hours of the night, I ventured into Eva's room, apprehension gnawing at my every step. Something was amiss, something deeply unsettling that had taken hold of my daughter. As I crossed the threshold, my heart skipped a beat, for there she stood, a solitary figure framed against the moonlit window, engaged in an animated conversation with an unseen presence. I approached cautiously, my breath catching in my throat, only to discover there was no tangible companion at her side. Bewilderment clutched at my mind as I reached out to touch her trembling hands, hoping to soothe her troubled soul and coax her into a restful slumber. But what I witnessed next would forever haunt the depths of my memory. In her innocent eyes, I glimpsed a sight that sent shivers down my spine, prompting an instinctual fear to seize me. With a surge of panic, I hastily retreated from the room, securing the door behind me. The realization struck me with chilling intensity. This was no mere child of seven, but a being caught in the grip of an inexplicable strangeness that eluded comprehension. My husband, John, was utterly unfazed. He dismissed the whole ordeal, leaving the case untouched and his interest enkindled. It seemed my words merely drifted past him, leaving no lasting impression. But I was determined to pry his attention away from its comfortable sanctuary and force him to confront the growing turmoil surrounding our daughter, Ava. You see, it had been two long years since the tragic fire that claimed my father's life, reducing his once vibrant existence to a mere memory of ashes. The intensity of the blaze had left no remnants of his earthly form, erasing any possibility of a proper farewell. Ever since that fateful incident, Ava's behavior had taken a disconcerting turn, veering into realms uncharted and unforeseen. It was a perplexing deviation from what we had come to expect, for she had been inseparable from her beloved grandfather, displaying a devotion that surpassed even her affection for her own father and me. In the face of this enigma, I found myself at a loss, grappling with uncertainty, unsure of how to proceed. As the clock struck midnight, I retreated to the refuge of our bedroom, eager to engage my husband in a fervent discussion about potential solutions to the Ava crisis. Proposing the idea of seeking professional help from a psychiatrist, I implored John to consider the well-being of our troubled daughter. To my dismay, he vehemently rebuffed the notion, arguing that Ava's tender age rendered her ill-suited for the realms of psychological treatment. He maintained that such an endeavor might inflict more harm than good, casting a shadow of doubt over the potential consequences. With our deliberation reaching an impasse, I resigned myself to sleep, hoping to find solace in the embrace of dreams. However, an undercurrent of unease gripped my consciousness, refusing to release its hold. It was as though some primal instinct whispered in my ear, warning of impending danger. A jolt of trepidation coursed through my veins as I strained my ears, detecting faint footsteps echoing through the expanse of our abode. The floor above creaked ever so subtly, reminding me that we resided in a two-story dwelling. Upstairs lay a room, its entrance locked since the day we moved into this house, concealing its secrets within. And beneath that very floor, a basement held our surplus belongings items we deemed unnecessary for the present moment. With a shudder, I realized that our seemingly tranquil home harbored depths yet unexplored, and an ominous presence stirred within its walls, eager to reveal itself. 
From above, an unsettling sound reverberated its source, potentially Avar self. But what could have stirred her at this unholy hour? Compelled by both curiosity and concern, I cautiously ascended the stairs, each step a deliberate act of trepidation. Yet, as I proceeded, an invisible force ensnared my feet, attempting to thwart my progress. Summoning every ounce of strength, I rested myself free, surging forward and ascending the stairs. However, when I glanced down at my legs, a sight of horror greeted me. Deep wounds marred my flesh, blood seeping relentlessly from the gashes. I couldn't fathom the reality of the situation unfolding before me, my mind recoiling in terror. A feeble light cast its glow from beneath the closed door of a room. How had it come to be ajar? Who dared to disturb its slumber? Drawn by an inexplicable magnetism, I inched closer, and there, in the center of the room, stood Eva, engrossed in an ethereal consultation as though conversing with unseen entities. At that very moment, the door swung shut, trapping both Eva and me inside. A chilling breeze whispered through the space, lending weight to the notion that we were not alone. Eva paid no heed to my presence, resuming her discourse with the empty air. Fear seeped into my voice as I interjected, My love, what are you doing here at this hour? Her reply struck me like a bolt of paralysis-inducing lightning. She informed me that she was speaking with Toms, a name that instantly transformed me into a statue of shock. Toms was my deceased father, and Ava had often spoken of conversing with him. The revelation sent my mind spiraling into darkness, a heavy blow rendering me mentally incapacitated as I crumpled to the floor. Just as my consciousness waned, I caught a glimpse of Jack standing above me, his expression a mix of concern and bewilderment. When I regained awareness, I found myself lying on a bed, Jack and Ava standing before me. As I began to speak, I feigned ignorance, claiming a complete loss of memory. A concocted tale of temporary amnesia danced upon my lips, intending to deceive and gauge their reactions. It was a carefully orchestrated performance, a movie I directed in the recesses of my mind. The doctor emerged, and I remained in bed, the clock ticking away the hours until the stroke of one. It was then that I witnessed Jack rise from the bed, slipping away from the room with calculated stealth. When questioned about his destination, he mumbled something about fetching a glass of water before departing. Unbeknownst to him, I trailed in his wake, observing silently as he ascended the stairs. His purpose became evident as he approached the closed room, opening its door without hesitation. Acting swiftly, I slipped inside and sealed the door behind me, leaving a slight crack to peer through. And there, my eyes widened as Jack retrieved a large, ominous black bag from the very spot where Ava had stood the previous night, engaged in her spectral conversations. The truth crystallized in my mind with grim certainty. The contents of that bag belonged to none other than Tom's. Fleeing from the horrifying truth, I dashed to the sanctuary of my room, hoping to shield myself from the weight of what I had witnessed. Sleep eluded me that night, for lying beside me was a man I now knew to be a remorseless serial killer, one who had extinguished the life of my beloved father. Consumed by an overwhelming sense of helplessness, I grappled with the question of what I should do next. Without his knowledge, I mustered the courage to report the ghastly truth to the police, imploring them to investigate our apartment, with a particular focus on the upper floor where Jack resided. As they combed through the rooms, a torrent of trepidation coursed through my veins, for I suspected that Jack was aware of my actions and possessed the upper hand, his expression betraying a self-assured smile that mocked my futile attempts to expose him. To my dismay, the police search yielded nothing, leaving me disheartened and bewildered. However, fate intervened at that very moment, as the anguished cries of Ava pierced the air. Hastening to her side, I found her sobbing, 
her gaze fixed beneath the bed. Desperate to unravel the mystery, I inquired about her distress. In a detached manner, she responded, her voice a mere echo of her own, revealing that Thomas, the very soul of my late father, lingered beneath the bed, refusing to emerge. Moved by her words, I summoned the police to inspect the hidden recesses beneath Ava's bed, where an ominous discovery awaited them, a concealed cavity containing a bag harboring skeletal remains. The forensics team, upon analyzing the bones, confirmed the ghastly truth. It was Thomas, my father, who had met his untimely demise. And in that chilling moment, Jack's facade crumbled, as he confessed to the heinous act, driven by a personal vendetta born of a bitter dispute that had soured their professional relationship. The motive was greed, the lure of inheritance. I thought the nightmare had finally drawn to a close, but the ringing of a phone shattered my newfound calm. Startled, I answered, only to hear Jack's voice emanating from within the prison walls, his words dripping with a sinister certainty. I knew, deep down, that one day you would uncover the truth, as did- Today's story is over. Our stories are not over yet. See you tomorrow in a new day of horror.